So as I said, it's pretty much like you're creating your own variables, your own types of variables, just like we have int and, and float and stuff like that. Right now you have the type ogre of which you could make specific variables of it. So if you'd like, you can think of it like somewhere along the the inside of the C++ compilers. You could think of it like someone, the inventors of C++ typed something like class integer and then they gave it uh, inside of it all the neat stuff that you can do with integer like like the number that you could store inside of it which is really a whole bunch of a whole bunch of of bits and bytes so it's really advanced things for us and then probably also the functions that we use with it like plus plus uh, minus divided and stuff like that and then after the integer was created we could start e making uh, specific variables of this type of class, of this type of variable. The same thing C++ empowers us with the possibility of creating our own little variables of which we could later on create as many as we'd like, just like you create integer variables. Um, the only difference is that when the creators of C++ created the integer type, of course they were dealing with a lot more advanced complicated stuff like these bits and bytes and stuff like that and we won't be di digging that deep into the computer's brains we're only going to be using already existing stuff like integer variables and other types of variables whatever it is we need so C++ prepared for us the very basic types of variables that we're going to be using all the time and we are going to be creating more advanced types of c variables which can gather together a hundred integers, a hundred floats, and a hundred functions. Because after all, everything in programming is either a number, uh, whether it's a f whole number or a real floating point number, or maximum it's a character, which, uh, as we learned many videos ago, is actually a number itself. So everything is numbers anyway. We d we have no use of creating our own basic number variables. C++ already created number variables for us. We have the integers, we have the floats, we have everything we need, all the basic stuff we need. Now we will create our own variables based on those which are already built in. And that's what's so totally awesome about C++. You can create your own variables which you'll be making use of throughout your whole program as in contrast to other programming languages in which you can only use the very basic number variables and that's it over here you can compose whatever type of variable you can think of okay let's see a little bit more about how exactly do you create a class just like we saw in functions that if you'd like you could just create the function the declaration and the definition all together in one shot just make sure that it exists already before we start using it in the main function or whatever or if you'd like you can separate it into two parts you can have the declaration over here and the definition somewhere else which is useful as we'll still learn in a different video the same thing you can have with classes you can either declare and define the whole entire class and everything it has and how it works all together on one shot or you can just have the declaration at one point and the full definition somewhere else and again we'll see later on how this can be very useful and how it's very fundamental to the rules of object-oriented programming but for now we're just gonna do it all together the declaration and the definition all together so a class has two things it has its members and it has its methods the members are the member variables like these two integer variables right over here the member variables are what really decide how big your class is and how much memory will be needed for every single variable of this type that you will make because for every variable of this type that you make they will each have their own integer health and their own integer strength so that makes two integers for this thing over here two integers for this one two integers for this one and two inter integers for this one too the member variables are variable variables which you will have one per instance of the class that you will be making when I say instance I mean one actual variable that you create in your program for example this over here 
is an instance of type integer. This over here is an instance of type ogre. This over here is an instance of type character. You can have as many instances as you'd like of one given uh, variable type. So over here, every single instance of the class of the type ogre will have its own set of member variables. So any types and variables which you put into a class will be the, me the member variables for this type. Then we have the methods of a class, which basically mean the functions that you put inside of your class. The functions, of course, are not variables. The variables in a class is the member variables. The functions in a class is the methods of what a class does. You could think of it like this, simply. A class has a bunch of variables and it does a bunch of functions. So over here, t has these variables over here and t could also do this function over here. Same is for this one over here. It has two integers and it can do one function as well as here and here. X over here, I guess, just has one number and it can do a whole bunch of operations like plus and minus and plus plus and things like that. So a variable can have member variables and it can do methods. So yes, you guessed right, a class can have in itself variables of any type including types that you yourself created. For example, if for some reason I create a class called uh, clan, I could put inside of it as many integers as I'd like or whatever functions I'd like. And right now I could also put inside of it um, a variable of type ogre that I myself created. Ogre over here has two variables of type integer. Clan over here has one integer variable and has one ogre variable. So let's finish making our ogre class over here. The only thing missing meanwhile is to define exactly how does the function attack work. We could do that right on the spot right over here. For now let's just say that the function attack will print out the message I'm attacking. So here as I said before we're doing everything together, the declaration and the definition all in one spot. Later on we'll learn how to separate this into different files. Now here is how I could use the variable ogre. First thing in my main function or in whatever function I'm going to be making a the ogre, I have to create of course a variable of type ogre. So let's just make one variable ogre right over here and we'll call it t. Now to be able to do stuff with the things that t has because as we know t has two variables one health and one strength and it also has a function called attack. How do we use t's stuff? So just to get a quick peek on it, first we'll have to add over here the word public and a colon. We'll get into this a little bit later. Just add this line right over here at the top of the declaration of the class ogre. Then in our main function we can start using all the stuff that's inside t with the dot operator, the period operator symbol. The way this is done is you, now that we created t, we type t right over here then we type the dot operator and that gives you access to all of T's stuff. Like for example, if I want to play around with T's health, I could do T dot health and that is an integer variable so I could give it a number like 7. So now this variable T, this instance of the class ogre, uh, his health now is set to 7. And to make sure of that, we're going to print out t's health, again with the dot operator right over here, we're going to print that out to the screen. And to finish off, we're going to call t's attack function, which is done simply by typing, again, t dot, and then calling that function, just like you would call any other function. Let's see all of this happening. Compiling. And here we go. Here's our program. My health is 7, just like we said it right over here, t's health 7, and we successfully called the attack function of the t variable, a method of the ogre class.